Well, now is the time in our service where we remember Jesus around his table. This is a time for Christians to remember Christ and what he has done for them on the cross. In just a few minutes, we're going to be taking a wafer and a bit of juice. And it's important for us to remember that these are symbols of the body and the blood of Christ that were offered at the cross. Uh, today, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using a passage that shows Jesus' willingness and his determination to accept the Father's wrath. So if you have your Bibles, would you turn with me to Matthew chapter 18? We're going to be looking at verses 10 and 11 together. And if you don't have a Bible, just raise your hand. There are some men coming down the aisles. They can get one to you. And if you don't own a Bible, please consider this as our gift to you so that you can begin reading God's word for yourself. At this point in our context in Matthew 18, uh, we are at the crucifixion and Jesus has finished praying in the garden. He has been attended to by an angel and he is fortified and he is ready to go to the cross. He's ready for what's ahead. If we look at verse one, we can see that Jesus brings his disciples to the place where he knows that Jesus, Judas will bring the Roman cohort. And in verse three, the Roman cohort appear there. In verse five, Jesus identifies himself as the one who is being sought. And in verse eight, Jesus secures the safety of his disciples. And in all of this, Jesus is showing that he and he alone is in control of this crucifixion. Nobody else is controlling anything in this process. And Jesus is showing this because he is demonstrating that once again, he is committed to his father's design for salvation. And this is the point at which Peter chooses to intervene. And as we read our passage, notice in verse 11, two things. Notice first what Jesus does when he gives a command to Peter. And then further on in the verse, notice Peter's instructions and his, his question to Peter. So let's read verses 10 and 11. Simon Peter then, having a sword, drew it and struck the high priest's slave and cut off his right ear. And the slave's name was Malchus. So Jesus said to Peter, put the sword into the sheath. The cup which the father has given me, shall I not drink it? First thing we want to notice here is Jesus' instruction to Peter. Put the sword in the sheath. Peter is telling, or Jesus is telling Peter something very clear here. And what he's saying is, I want nothing of your efforts to protect me and defend me. I am not striving for my own self-preservation in this. But then we move on to the question that he gives to Peter. And notice how he says, the cup which the Father has given me. Jesus is telling Peter that the Father has already made a decision in the past. And that decision has implications into the very present time. This is the perfect tense that Jesus is using here. He says to them, the cup that he's given me, shall I not drink it? He's telling him, this has been the father's plan all along and I embrace it. And what I embrace is that I must go to a cross and I must bear in my body the sin of everybody who would put their trust in me. And then I must bear in my body the wrath of the Holy Father against each and every one of those sins. That is God's design for salvation and I embrace that design. My father has a redemptive purpose in my suffering and I have no desire to fail him in that process. So Christian, that is how we want to remember Jesus this morning. We want to remember Jesus as the one who is willing to suffer and endure the father's wrath in the place of everyone who would put their trust in him. So when the elements come to you, take them and hold them for a minute and ponder Christ and his desire to serve in your place by taking your sin into his body and by suffering the Father's wrath against that sin for you so that you can be reconciled to a holy God. And when your heart is prepared, take the elements on your own. If you're here this morning and you are not a follower of Christ and you believe there is some way other than Christ by which you can be reconciled to a holy God, you need to understand that your belief is not supported by any biblical truth whatsoever. It might be a noble thought, but it simply is not supported by God's holy word. There is one and there is only one plan for salvation. 
And that is through salvation, through faith in Jesus Christ as your atoning sacrifice in your place. After the service, there will be someone up here to my right, to your left. They'll be happy to talk with you about what life with Christ looks like. They will have a Bible. They can open it with you and they can show you how you too can know Christ in a saving way. So men come and serve us and I will come and close our time in prayer.